100 and I uh, just want to talk about um, the joy of the Lord um, because uh, it, I think we're going into a very busy time here with uh, BTI all over us and uh, it's going to get hectic uh, during these next two weeks but uh, the joy of the Lord uh, the Bible says is our strength amen and so whatever uh, is going on in our life right now, whatever the circumstances or situations are, or whatever they may become, uh, we need to remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength. No matter what it is, um, it don't matter what, what we face. We're not talking about uh, a pleasure and happiness because those things, of course, are dependent on circumstances, but we're talking about the joy of the Lord that is independent of uh, circumstances and, and things going on in life. And um, Psalms 100, uh, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And of course, what the psalmist David writes here, uh, it should be true and it should be accomplished in our life every day. Again, because the joy of the Lord is not dependent upon our circumstances or what we experience. And so the psalmist David says that we ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. When? In good times and in bad times. When uh, things are going smooth and when they're not going so smooth, we should make a joyful noise and serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. And then verse 3, we are reminded... It says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. He's the God of uh, your life, the God of my life. He's our master. He's our keep. He's our stay. He is our God. And no matter what goes on uh, or what's, what has been going on or what's, what we've been going through up to this moment, we must know that he is God. Amen. He's, that song says, you know, he, he's, he's, he's the God of the mountain. He's the God in the valley. Uh, it don't matter where you are. He is God and you must know it. Not just uh, up here in our head, but we must know it in our heart. That way we are unmovable and unshakable no matter what we face in life, knowing that he is God. The Bible says it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now, uh, these writings here, of course, are, are good for us at all times. Uh, and I believe that comes, that comes to us when we have a confidence in the Lord, when we know who he is and uh, the Bible says that we should enter into his presence, not with complaining, not with uh, murmuring, but that we should enter into his presence with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, and we should be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. <laughs> And I want to briefly just take a look at the life of Jesus at the time of the death of Lazarus. Um, uh, there in, in John chapter 11, I believe it is. Um, of course, at this time of his life, John, uh, uh, Jesus had received news that a good friend of his had just died. And of course, that good friend of his was Lazarus. Now... Uh, we've all been touched, uh, I think, to some degree with uh, either the loss of a loved one or the loss of a friend. And we know exactly uh, how that feels, especially when uh, it is a loved one, it is a family member, our, our grandmother, grandfather, our mom or our dad or, or one of our siblings. And uh, those of us uh, that have experienced it uh, knows how moving uh, and what a toll that can take on, on an individual uh, emotionally. So we can imagine Jesus, right, 
uh, when he receives the news that his friend Lazarus uh, 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 was sick. And of course, uh, in the midst of knowing that Lazarus was sick, Jesus was able to stay under control and, uh, and still demonstrate confidence in God because had he not had confidence in God, he would have rushed to the scene and tried to see what he could do to save the man's life. But he even spoke to his disciples and he said, just settle down. Uh, this sickness is not unto death. Now, what confidence, right, that he demonstrates uh, uh, in his heavenly father, uh, his, his uh, joy and his confidence in, in the heavenly father is not, is not disturbed, but rather he, he holds to the truth that uh, all will be well. When his disciples uh, talk to him, you know, Jesus is facing different things. He's facing uh, uh, a lack of understanding on behalf of those that are closest to him because of the decision he has made. Have you ever, has anyone ever questioned the decision that you've made? Has anyone ever made you feel uncomfortable over a decision you've made? Uh, and you also know how that might feel, right? And here was Jesus, and he received the news that his friend Lazarus was sick. Please hurry up and come. And yet he tells his disciples, hold on a minute. And, and the disciples can't understand, why don't we go? I mean, and, and even after that, when he tells them, I must go to a certain place, they say, last time you were there, they wanted to stone you and kill you. Why do you want to go back there? And then uh, he talks to them a little bit more, and they say, well, if he's well, then, then he'll be all right. If he's sleeping, he'll be well. Just, it seems like a complete lack of understanding. Uh, and yet, Jesus' confidence in God uh, is not moved. And sometimes, you know, again, uh, some of the decisions that, that, that we make don't make sense to people. But when we have confidence that we've been in the presence of God and we've sought God and we've asked God for guidance and direction, no matter what anyone else thinks, no matter what anyone else believes, um, uh, we have this confidence that, uh, that we have found the mind of God and that direct, the direction that we're going uh, is in agreement with the word of God and is according to God's will. And we follow after that whether people understand it or not. Um, we find in that, in that same account all the doubts and all the fears of uh, Mary and Martha, right? Um, all the things that Jesus is facing just in this one account in John chapter 11, when he encounters them, uh, certainly to, to an extent disappointed. Why didn't you come sooner, Lord? If you'd have come, my brother would not have died. And all the doubts and all the fears that are represented in the lives of Mary and Martha that, that have to do or impact uh, Jesus in some way. I mean, to observe, have you ever been around somebody who is full of doubts and is full of fears and how uh, oftentimes, you know, it may even have been us, I don't know, but certainly we've encountered people who have been full of doubts and fears and, and don't know what to do and how to handle it, and yet someone has to have confidence that God is able to quench all those doubts and remove all of those fears and a person who is full of confidence in God uh, is not easily moved and is able to minister to people and tell them, listen, everything's going to be okay. Just let, let's trust in God. Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord. And then let's have faith that God is going to take care of all of these things. And, and there was Jesus, right, reminding Mary and Martha through all their doubts and all their fears, listen, it's going to be okay. If, if, if you'll just believe... Um, uh, I am the life and the resurrection. If you just believe uh, in, in the Lord, everything's going to be just fine. And through this whole process, Jesus is keeping his eyes on the author and finisher of our faith. Um, everything's going to be just fine. And of course, uh, one of the uh, biggest challenges that he faces in John 11 um, is, is the impossible. Is, is a dead man, right? What do you do with the dead man? This is, this is the impossible trial, the impossible test. This is, there's nothing that can be done here. I mean, it's, it's, it's over, it's sealed, he's gone. And yet, even when things seem impossible, Jesus is not moved. Jesus is not perturbed. 
uh, his faith in God, his confidence in God. Again, the psalmist David says, know that he uh, is God. Know that he is good, that his mercy endureth forever, and that we should enter into his courts with praise, into his presence, uh, and uh, giving him thanks when in the good times and in times that we may encounter like Jesus did, in times of doubts, in times of fear, in times of being misunderstood, in times of facing the impossible, what Psalms chapter 100 tells us, uh, you know, we know the word of God is good all the time. So just because circumstances change for us or, the, or people around us, we still must look to Psalms 100 uh, where it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Worship him, praise him, glorify him, no matter what's going on. And here I look to Jesus and I say, what confidence he had, right? And he didn't have confidence in, uh, in just any old thing. His confidence was in God. Uh, his confidence was in, in that he knew that God uh, could not fail and would not fail. And so here he faces the impossible. And yet through it all, uh, Jesus is not moved. And to the extent that you find after he weeps and after they take him to the place where Lazarus is at, uh, and he asked them to remove the stone, that once they remove the stone, uh, in John chapter 11, verse 41, he says, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. Why? Because that's where our help comes from, right? Uh, from the Lord. And so he goes all the way to this point in this account of the Bible, and he knows where his strength comes from. Now we, now we see him in Scripture, you know, physically lifting up his eyes to heaven, but uh, his eyes had always been on the Father. His expectation and his hope had always been on the Father. And even in those, uh, those moments leading up to this particular moment, the joy of the Lord was deep within his heart. Thankfulness to God. And here we find him that when he lifts up his eyes to heaven, he says to the Lord, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Now, this is uh, really the first time that, the Lord, that Jesus prays to the Father in this account. And it's interesting to note that he says, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. As though he had already received whatever it was that he was about to ask for. And, and, and isn't that what faith is about? Uh, what is faith? The substance uh, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we see the confidence that Christ had uh, at this moment. He's already thanking God before he's even asked for it. But he's about to ask for it, but he can thank God because he knows that he can receive from the hand of the Father what it is he's about to ask for. And you know, that's what the joy of the Lord does in our heart too. And, and our confidence in God can cause us that no matter what's going on in our life, if it's the hardest thing we've ever faced, or if it's doubts and fears, or if it's uh, impossibilities, that we can still approach God in the midst of all of that, and we can say, Lord, I thank Thee because I know that Thou art with me. I thank Thee, Lord, because I know that what I need, You're able to supply. You're able to give. You're able to answer. I don't physically see it right now, but Lord, I have faith and, I, and I, I'm going to grab a hold of it and I'm going to thank you as though I already had received it. That's what faith is about. And that's also what causes us to have joy in our heart because it's not about, again, pleasures and happiness, which are, which are dependent upon our circumstances, but the joy of the Lord goes, uh, goes deep down into our hearts and it, it, uh, it rises to only rise again in us. It bubbles up uh, inside of us when we truly believe and trust in who God is and what he's been and what he means to our lives. And even in the moments of impossibilities, saying, Lord, I thank thee. This is impossible to me, but I thank thee because I know you have heard me and you know my heart. And then we can pray to God with that great joy and that great expectation and great confidence, knowing that his mercies 
are from everlasting to everlasting and from generation to generation. So we thank the Lord today uh, because He is God, right? Because He is good, because He is faithful. Nothing moves Him and we can trust and believe that He is able to supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory. Having said that, what are your needs today?